Daredevil has long been one of Marvel Comics' premier characters. With a massive list of writers and artists who have crafted some of the most revered stories in comics centered around the character of Matt Murdock and his crime-fighting alter ego. While there have been many different approaches to Daredevil over the years, one constant has almost always remained in place since writer and artist Frank Miller's defining work on the character during the 1980s. Matt Murdock suffers. Racked with Catholic guilt, dedicated to stopping crime due to a tragic past and suffering countless losses, including the death of many loved ones, Daredevil is one of the most tortured characters in comic books. Thankfully, writers like Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, Anne Nocenti, and the aforementioned Miller have managed to tell fresh and powerful stories with this theme. Even when the darkness in Daredevil's life seemed both inescapable and foregone in the process of crafting a compelling narrative that uses the character. That is, until writer Mark Wade came on board as the new writer for Daredevil starting in 2011 with a seminal run that lasted through 2015, including 58 issues spread across two volumes. Teaming up with a range of artists that included Paolo Rivera, Marcos Martin, Javier Rodriguez, and most importantly, Chris Samney, Wade's epic run on Daredevil is the story of a Matt Murdock who fights against his inner darkness, as well as the outer forces of darkness that threaten to take everything away from him. The result is a brilliant, inspiring roller coaster of a saga that joins the ranks of the character's great stories, thanks to Wade's emotionally honest and vibrantly beautiful take on the character. But to better understand the power of what Wade did with Daredevil, we have to step back into the past. When Daredevil was created by Stan Lee and Bill Everett in 1964, he was a far lighter character than the modern version familiar to most. Yes, Matt Murdock was blinded at a young age by radioactive chemicals that enhanced his senses and gave him a radar ability. He also fought crime due to the murder of his father, but his adventures typically had a swashbuckling tone characteristic of most superhero comics of the time. It wasn't until Frank Miller pushed the character into far darker and more tragic storylines that the idea of Daredevil changed. It also led to countless incredible stories that made the most of this narrative sensibility. Afterward, Daredevil became a tortured vigilante whose guilt weighed him down just as much as the tragic losses he would experience across the next several decades. Everything from the murder of several love interests, to his true identity being exposed to the public, to the general darkening of his storylines defined who Daredevil was to readers. By the time Wade came on board, Daredevil had been temporarily possessed by a demon and turned into a full-fledged villain. Even though he was redeemed, Daredevil's storylines had become just about as dark as they could possibly get. When Marvel gave the reins of Daredevil to Wade, an industry veteran whose works included seminal runs on both Marvel and DC Comics characters, the writer decided to take the character in a new direction. Gone were the dour and depressing storylines from past comics and in their place was a brighter, faster, and more fun take on Daredevil's adventures. But the brilliance in Wade's run isn't a simple choice to return to the character's original tone, but that the tone was in and of itself a choice by the character within the narrative. Rather than allow the darkness of his past years to continue to define him, Matt Murdock made the conscious decision to be happy and upbeat once again. But is this a new reality for Matt? or is he simply faking his new persona to mask the crippling weight of countless traumas? That question looms over Matt throughout Wade's story and gives a great emotional heft to the many smaller arcs that make up the larger narrative at play throughout his run on Daredevil. While the series as a whole took on a brighter and more adventurous tone in comparison to the noir crime stories that came before, Wade's Daredevil stories often veered into the disturbing and deeply troubling. Matt himself must struggle against these serious challenges, each of them threatening to send him spiraling back into depression for good. When asked about his approach to the series and the character of Daredevil in 2011, Wade said, I've got the chance to do something that nobody else in comics has the same setup to run with, a character who has been through the absolute worst that you can put a character through. And instead of waking up in the morning and being a victim to all that, he woke up one morning and made the decision that all people who suffer from darkness and depression have to make at some point. Which is that you have to go, you know what, I'm tired of my life being like this. It's insanity to keep perpetuating this victimhood, so it doesn't mean you're absolved of your sins, but you stop living your life in the same way and expecting different results. From protecting clients targeted by corrupt corporations to battling truly disturbing new villains like Coyote and Ikari, to struggling with an ever-mounting conspiracy against him, 
Small arcs are slowly tied together because of their collective weight on Matt's mental state. Crucially, Matt's great burdens are balanced with his reckless attitude, an attribute that has consistently defined the man without fear since his early days. That attitude speaks volumes about Matt's mindset, as he is both selflessly pursuing justice and also near suicidal in his actions at times. Just as important as the narrative choices are the artistic ones made to bring Daredevil's story to life. Starting with Rivera, Matt's adventures are given a far more vibrant and colorful tone than what was seen in the many years prior. Each artist brought on board gave Daredevil's adventures a new take, but the constant was how exciting every story could be, no matter how dark the ideas. This was also the story that brought new life to Daredevil's signature radar vision. Rarely shown in comics prior, Wade's Daredevil showed his blind hero's ability to sense the space around him to full effect interpreting it as brilliant red lines against a flat black background. Matt Murdock doesn't live in darkness. He sees the world in greater ways than what someone could possibly imagine. While numerous artists helped set the visual tone for the run, with Paolo Rivera being the first and most highly influential of them all, artist Chris Samney's arrival on the book gave Wade his perfect partner for this specific vision. Drawing the majority of the series, Samney's art has a heightened, angular quality akin to a cartoon, but it also embodies a wide range of human emotions. Wade's run includes a more heightened atmosphere than most modern street-level Daredevil runs. With all manner of colorful villains and outlandish battles, this series thrusts the man without fear back into the weird superhero world of Marvel Comics, and Samney's art feels right at home in such an environment. Combined with often stunning panel layouts, Samney was able to bring both exhilarating action set pieces and intimate character moments to life in equal brilliance. Wade makes it clear early on that while a sense of fun would pervade his take on Daredevil, there would be no shortage of dark developments in the life of Matthew Murdock. These include the theft of his deceased father's body, being simultaneously targeted by multiple criminal organizations, losing all of his senses temporarily, discovering a human trafficking ring that separates people's heads from their bodies, and combating the schemes of multiple villains seeking to destroy both Matt and the city he has sworn to protect. Most often, the question was not whether Daredevil would survive. This is a superhero story after all, but what he could possibly lose in the process. But Matt not only repeatedly overcomes these many obstacles, but also strives forward in his personal healing. Unlike the many Daredevil stories of the past, these mounting difficulties do not break Matt. They give him a continual reason to fight on. With Wade's run on the series split into two volumes due to Marvel rebranding their comics in 2014, the writer took this opportunity to advance his story in unexpected ways. Murdoch's commitment to justice takes the most unexpected of turns at the end of the first volume, where he admits in court that he is, in fact, Daredevil. It's an admission that the character had fought against for years, but it's a development that not only pushes the book forward, but falls in line with how Matt has come to embrace the truth and light. Here, it helps him thwart villainous plans, but it also lifts great burdens from his shoulders. As a result, Matt is forced to move to San Francisco due to being disbarred in New York, but the sacrifice is ultimately worthwhile. However, the greatest dangers within Wade's story come when the lives of his loved ones hang in the balance. As his longtime best friend, law firm partner, and fixture of Daredevil comics since their beginning, Foggy Nelson plays a crucial role in Wade's Daredevil narrative. While supportive of his friend and wanting the best for him, Foggy can't help but wonder if Matt has actually had a mental breakdown that is being covered up by his newfound attitude. And he's given good cause to wonder that, as a hidden figure seeks to break Murdoch completely. But it's a cancer diagnosis that puts Foggy at the greatest and most relatable risk. Struggling against his cancer, Foggy simultaneously provides Matt with his greatest weakness and his greatest support. Matt can't save Foggy from cancer, but they can fight together, no matter the odds. Just as important within the story is new character Kirsten McDuffie, assistant district attorney and Matt's complicated love interest. Kirsten is funny, tough, and incredibly intelligent, even if her stubbornness puts her in enough danger without being connected to Daredevil. However, Matt has a long history of girlfriends put in extreme peril due to his alter ego, causing his relationship with Kirsten to be cause for extreme worry for both hero and reader. The tension caused by his past losses creates a complex relationship between the two, but Kirsten is most assuredly not a damsel in distress. 
Nor is she ignorant of the potential dangers. She knows that Matt is Daredevil, even when he won't admit it, but makes her own choices concerning their relationship, rendering her an equal partner in the decisions that affect both Matt and her. Given Daredevil's propensity for suffering the death of loved ones, the question of her safety dangles like a guillotine over the series as a whole. But it's when these two are endangered in the final arc of Wade's run that Matt enters his darkest hours. While Matt's move to San Francisco in the second volume of Wade's run features the same characteristic swashbuckling sense of adventure as ever, the story takes possibly its darkest turns. Foggy's perilous battle with cancer and a cavalcade of villainous encounters quickly escalate, despite his move to San Francisco being the chance to turn a new page in his life. The former hero known as the Shroud seeks to take apart Matt's life. His old enemy, the Owl, gains terrifying new powers. A vision of the past makes Matt question the goodness of his deceased loving father, and a run-in with the Purple Man and his empowered children reawakens Matt's crippling depression. These events slam into Daredevil one after the other until a final play by the Shroud begins to ruin the lives of Matt, Kirsten, and Foggy by exposing their personal lives and the secrets of their legal clients. The extreme danger forces Matt to come to Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, the man who has caused the greatest pain in his life and ask him to use his considerable assets to protect Foggy and Kirsten. In exchange, Fisk will wipe Matt Murdock from the face of the earth. But Fisk takes the advantage to destroy Matt's loved ones, leading to one last battle. Like any great comic book climax, the final battle between Daredevil and Kingpin's forces encapsulates both the greatest physical challenges ever faced by the hero and the most important themes of the narrative. Matt's final fight is not just a test of his fighting skills, but a battle against the darkness within his soul. The outcome brings monumental catharsis in both Wade's saga and the many years of Daredevil stories that preceded it. Whereas many seminal Daredevil writers of the past have chosen to leave Matt Murdock's life in a worse state than when they came on board, Wade gives Matt true happiness. This is not a Shakespearean tragedy, but rather it is a tale of inspirational triumph. Daredevil stares into the darkness but does not give in to it. His will to fight back and his love for those he cares about most is not sacrificed. Instead, it compels him in his darkest moments. It's only appropriate that the final panels of Wade's run see Murdoch fading into bright white light. This triumph of the human spirit is earned and is all the sweeter for it. Great superhero comics inspire readers to reach for something better, to be better than the person they were yesterday, no matter the trauma behind or obstacles ahead. As Matt takes hold of his better nature and is transformed by it, so must we all.